And you talked about the importance of proximity, um, which you talk about in Just Mercy. Um, and your grandmother said, if you really want to understand something, you have to get close to it. Um, and I think that's a really powerful point. Um, and it seems to me that it's critical to empathy. Yeah. Right? You know someone's life story, you're likely to be empathetic. Um, how do we make that happen? You know, I bet there are a lot of people in the audience who uh, understand that, appreciate it, but our whole world at this point in time is about separation. I mean, despite the fact that we may be con connected on social media, there's increasing separation, increasing segregation. We're in our own enclaves. Um, so how do we um, create that proximity? Yeah, I, I think just, just first of all, I think for, again, I think there's a theological dimension to this that I just want to stress. I think you cannot be a believer and allow yourself to be separated from those who are struggling and suffering. I, I don't think that's possible. I mean, the, the, uh, you know, the, the Christianity is organized around this idea that there has to be proximity. And we sing these songs at the cross, near the cross. The whole idea is that it's our willingness to get close to these things that can represent suffering but can also represent redemption that define faith. And so I think it's not just something we should choose to do. I think we are, many of us are called to do it. We are required to do it, to actually act out our faith. And I think sometimes it's the simple things. It's the easy things that we don't embrace. So w one story I, I often tell about my grandmother. So I was in the second grade when the schools integrated in my community. And when integration came to our community, my grandmother was actually really worried about us because she'd never lived through that. Right. And uh, she just all of a sudden started coming up to me. I was like nine or 10. And she would just give me these hugs and she'd squeeze me so tightly, I thought she was trying to hurt me. <laughs> and then she'd see me an hour later and she'd say, Brian, do you still feel me hugging you? And if I said no, she would jump on me again. <laughs> So by the time I was 10, my grandmother had taught me every time I saw her, I would always say, Mama, I always feel you hugging me. And she'd smile this smile. And I didn't really appreciate what she was teaching me until much later in life. As I said, she worked into her 90s. She fell one day when she got in her 90s and she broke her hip. Then she was diagnosed with cancer. And my grandmother was dying when I was a college student. And I went to go see her and... Uh, and uh, I, I knew it was getting close to the end. She was on a bed, and I went into her bedroom, and I held her hand, and uh, she wasn't responding. She didn't open her eyes. She didn't say anything. And somehow I got it in my head that my grandmother couldn't die if I was talking to her. So I just decided to, to talk. And so I started talking, and I talked, and I talked, and I talked, and I talked. And I was in there so long that one of my relatives came in and said, Brian, you can't do this. You can't just stay in here and talk forever. And I stood up and I was heartbroken. And I, was a, I took a step away to leave and that's when my grandmother opened her eyes and then she squeezed my hand and she looked at me and the last thing my grandmother said to me, she said, Brian, do you still feel me hugging you? And then she said, I want you to know I'm always going to be hugging you. And there've been times in my life when I feel like I can feel the embrace of my grandmother. But that's what I'm talking about because I believe we overestimate, we underestimate the power we have to affirm the humanity and dignity of people around right. us. And so when people fall down, when people have been neglected, when people have been imprisoned, when people have been discarded, when people have been disfavored, all of us have the ability, if we can't do anything else, we all have the ability to get close to someone who is suffering, who is struggling, who's fallen down, and wrap our arms around them and affirm their humanity and their dignity. And that's how you build fellowship. That's how you build community. That's how you build witness. That's how you build the society where justice begins to rise. And I just don't think it's acceptable to so, say, well, I can't affirm someone's humanity. I don't know how to affirm someone's dignity. We all have that power. We all have that capacity. And from that, all the other things flow. So I really do think it begins with just making that choice right. to connect. Right. 